This is the weekend edition of Primetime News. A very good evening to all our viewers. Well, we are coming to you live and direct from the news studio is here in Colombo this evening. I'm Joel Outskun. Without much further ado, let's start off with a look at the headlines. President appoints a committee of experts to recommend a process to solve issues surrounding private medical colleges. ICT experts oppose attempts to give away local frequencies to foreign companies under the guise of new technological projects. Man attempts to illegally enter the president's official residence, released later on bail. Illegal sand mining continues in the Yang Oya despite warning. First off, a news from the President's diary this evening. The President has decided to appoint a committee of experts to consult on issues surrounding private medical colleges. President Maitri Policy Rusena will consider all the recommendations made by this committee of experts when solving the private medical college issue. The announcement was made following a special discussion that took place between the Government Medical Officers Association and the Sri Lanka Dental Association at the President's official residence this morning. Representatives of the GMOA had made extensive presentations to the President on the issues surrounding CITEM. The Government Medical Officers Association and the Sri Lanka Dental Association also presented two sets of proposals to the President to be taken into consideration when solving the matter. The President, who considered views and opinions expressed from both parties, had noted that the proposals and recommendations made by experts from all other spheres will also be taken into consideration when solving this issue. All recommendations and proposals would be directed to the expert committee appointed by the President and the President would make the final decision based on the recommendations reached by the committee. Head of the GMOA, Dr. Anruddha Padenia, and Head of the Sri Lanka Dental Association, Dr. Anand Ratnayaka, led their delegations to this meeting with the President. Meanwhile, the Government Medical Officers Association convened a media briefing today following their meeting with the President. We called on the President to issue a gazette which secured the minimum standards required for such a program. The President listened to our requests and then said that he need to obtain the opinions of all parties. He also notes that he will accept all proposals and seek the best solution for everyone. Well, the following is yet another revelation on Google's Project Loon which was said to provide high-speed internet connectivity at a low cost covering the entire island. The project was aimed at creating 10,000 Wi-Fi zones in the country with 13 loon balloons hovering above the country. This project was spearheaded by Muhundan Kanage, the Chief Executive Officer of the Information and Communication Technology Agency or ICTA. However, on the 17th of February 2016, the first ever loon balloon that was sent up in Sri Lanka crashed in Gampala. Later, it was revealed that this project was in fact being done by the Rama Corporation. It is a locally partnered corporation with a foreign company being the majority shareholder. However, experts in the field claim that the Rama Corporation being permitted to carry on with the Google Loon project has created many complications. There is nothing wrong with uh, doing experiments and uh, bringing in technologies, but we have to make sure that the absolutely critical resource for the telecommunication sector, which is radio frequency spectrum, is not disrupted. Its effective management is not disrupted by things that we haven't really thought through. So if you really look at the situation in Sri Lanka from uh, around 2002, 2004, with a great deal of effort, we have, have, we have a systematic way of allocating radio frequencies and at large amounts of money. Uh, we're talking about uh, millions of dollars being paid for chunks of spectrum. Now, uh, one of the concerns that I have about uh, the Google Loon, which is an experimental program, is I have no problem with it being given trial frequencies on a trial basis. But if it is given on a permanent basis, I think it will disrupt the uh, entire spectrum management uh, system in Sri Lanka. Because you don't want to have some people paying millions of dollars and other people not. So that is our concern. Rama Samagamahara Siddhakaran Mahadana Tarangamala Miladi Ganime Kriyavan. 
The transaction that is taking place behind handing over the frequencies to the Rama Corporation has raised suspicions. While showing that 25% of the ownership is vested with the government, they are carrying out a major project to sell out the frequencies of our country. At a time when the information technology sector is developing in the country, if we sell out these frequencies, the national wealth will be reduced not in small amounts but in billions. The ownership of the frequency that is used for broadcasting, be it television or radio, lies with that particular company. What will happen after this? This company will decide whether the frequencies should be sold or not. This is an issue that threatens national security as well. The problem we have at hand is, we have received information that this ICT company has signed a MOU at present. Lawyers of the Voice Against Corruption has compiled a document to ask for information with regard to the project under the Right to Information Act. The biggest question we have is, who is the board of directors at this Rama Corporation? What is this talk of the 25% ownership? What is the loss of national wealth that would be caused after selling the frequencies to such a company? The Voice Against Corruption is vigilant of this matter. We will collect information with regard to this in the future. We want to identify who it is that is going to get benefits from these balloons that never went up. We can identify this project as a project that will allow private companies to benefit from the national wealth of a country. We will reveal the details of this soon. Are domestic frequencies that are an important resource to the nation being given away to international companies under the guise of the claims that low-cost, high-speed internet connectivity will be provided to all? Muhundan Kanage, the Chief Executive Officer of the Information and Communication Technology Agency, is behind the Fair Google Loon project. Therefore, how did this project benefit him? On to more local news now, addressing a public meeting in Kilinochi, General Secretary of the JVP, Tilvin Silva, commented on fraud and corruption in the country. <laughs> In the recent times, the people hoped that the government would probe the thefts of the past and put a stop to the looting of public funds. But what we see today is something different. Theft is being committed even under this government. The Treasury bond scam caused the country a loss of 55,000 million rupees. The COPE report says that the losses caused by the 15 state institutions amounts to billions of rupees. Public funds are being wasted in monumental ways. This government is also wasting public funds rather than solving the people's issues. This is what we feel now. <laughs> Speaking further, Tilden Silva had this to say. If we fail to maintain unity among us whenever a racial struggle arises, it will only benefit our enemies. The defeated group of Mahindra Rajapaksa and the southern group of Mahindra Rajapaksa and persons like Vimal Viravansa aspire to come into power again. They are trying to come into power by inciting fear among the south about the north. Welcome back. You're tuned on to News First, weekend edition of Primetime News. In a story that made it to the headline this evening, a man who attempted to enter the official residence of President Maitri Palasilisena was arrested today. Police said that the man had failed to prove his identity at the time of the arrest, adding that he had behaved in an unruly manner. Interrogation has revealed that the individual had arrived in search of employment. The 33-year-old is a resident of Rajagiriya and a former SLFV member of the Kote Urban Council. Police SDF personnel arrested the suspect and handed him over to the Cinnamon Gardens Police, where he was released on police bail. And in some tragic news, the evening, now a woman died after she was knocked down by a train flying from Colombo to Kandy this morning. The tragedy took place at 11.45 this morning at the Pilimatalava crossing. The victim was travelling with her daughter to the Pilimatalava weekend fair. Eyewitness accounts note that the mother and daughter crossed the tracks when the gates were closed. They crossed even when we warned them not to. Mm. 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 The victim was a 48-year-old while her 12-year-old daughter is being treated for injuries. Locals allege that the failure to separate the Pilimantalava fair and the train tracks has increased the risk of accidents taking place in the area. Illegal sand mining continues. And up next is our investigative news segment, Action TV, which looks into this.
Work on the lower yarn ore project is nearing completion. The project is being spearheaded by a Chinese cooperation with all major decisions on the project being taken from Shanghai. The irrigation department is of the view that the reservoir which is being constructed by blocking the yarn ore will not be able to provide water to a large amount of land when taking into consideration the extent of land being used up for the reservoir. The lands that will be submerged through the project include lands of archaeological importance as well as many wildlife habitats. The creation of this project would lead to an intensification of the wild elephant conflicts being faced by residents of the Anuradhapura and Trincomalee districts. Excavation of all the Yarnoy project fell across an area which was said to be rich in ilmenite and ore rich in titanium. However, during the period in which excavations took place, the media was not allowed access to the area through the use of heavy fortifications. One can safely assume that ilmenite deposits were also extracted during the excavations. Excavations also made way for another discovery. This time, it was a large deposit of sand. The Ministry of Environment took prompt steps to ensure that the government is not able to reap the full benefit of this new discovery. The Ministry issued permits for certain individuals to mine the sand based on political suggestions. For nearly one and a half years, these individuals who obtained the license extracted sand disregarding environmental regulations. On the 30th of last month, the farmers in the area who could no longer cope up with the burden that they have been suffering due to the mining and transporting of sand took to the streets. When the Ministry of Environment could no longer ignore the voices of the people, they took steps to cancel all licenses with effect from the 30th of January. However, the cancellation was merely a farce as sand mining and transportation continues to this day. The police play a supporting role by hoodwinking the people. The police ride in front of trucks that transport sand in the area in order to provide the impression that these lorries have been taken into their custody. However, the police is yet to bring such a sand lorry into their custody or present such a lorry before court. For nearly three years, people who have been displaced due to the project have been left destitute without alternative lands or reparation for the lands that they lost. The same officials who are dragging their feet when making allocations to provide these people with reparations have created the necessary background for outsiders to earn a large amount of wealth through the mining of sand. This is simply another ugly site which has come to be associated with the yarn oil project. Shouldn't steps be taken at least now to remove the sand deposits that are remaining in the manner which falls in line with environmental regulations and then use that money to provide reparations to the people that have been affected? Secretary to the Minister of Environment, this is over to you. And on to yet another story that has battered our very own. Now, lives in Mavatagama Vevel Panava at risk due to a quarry being operated on the Nirani Mountain in Mipe. Today, locals obstructed the Mipe Junction and engaged in a demonstration demanding an immediate solution to the issue. Mavatagama is home to almost 1,500 persons and is located in the Vevel Panava locality in Mipe. The demonstration took place for almost an hour, obstructing vehicular movement in the area. The Nurani mountain bridges the north and south of Mipe, and according to locals, gneiss nice rock is being extracted from the mountain for almost 12 years, causing several risks to the residents. The risk which has been aggravating for the last four years has caused water springs in the area to dry up, fractures on walls of houses and also poses a risk of landslides on the mountain. With every explosion that they cause, the soil layer loosens. Then massive boulders fall onto the other side where there are houses with children. Many lives are at risk. The quarry projects have spread across an area of 4 kilometers. We request them to leave the village and carry out their trade in a manner that does not impact the village. The people have come together and voiced their concern, requesting the environment not to be destroyed. If a disaster takes place, the boulders will fall over here. If something like that happens, we will die. The assistant superintendent of police for the southern province who arrived at the location promised to solve the matter, prompting the demonstrators to disperse. When contacted, the divisional secretary of Paduka, S.H. Hevage, said that the Central Environment Authority, Geological Survey and Mines Bureau and other relevant organizations have agreed to discuss the matter. 
So we would like to shift our attention into a very interesting story this evening. Now the Minwangoda Udugampul, a public fair which was to be declared open by the Chief Minister of the Western Province, was declared open by the former chairman of the Minwangoda Pradeshya Sabha today. Parliamentarian Prasan Ranatunga was also present at the occasion. The commemorative plaque which was placed at the Minwangoda Udugampul public fair, which details that the fair was to be opened by the Chief Minister of the Western Province, Isura Deva Priya, had been removed from the location yesterday. A new commemorative plaque was placed at the location today and the fair was declared open. We challenged them, create a second public fair like this invested in the people of Mirwangoda. Then we will also applaud them. It has been two years since he took over, yet all he does is exact revenge and cry thief. <laughs> Prasanna Ranatunga ke budgale ho, Lanka ke single katavat tiye na, bollo biru ata kandu pahatte na ekiye ra. Ek tamai apne ata tiye na tiye. Mera jere chande du. The 6.2 million people who voted for this government question us on a daily basis why we weren't putting all these people behind bars. Whether they like it or not, it will happen in the future. Pramada kiye ra. Tiye kahanda ekol ke amatu na taake amatu na ek aniwarre misarar siddhu ena. Convening a media briefing today, SLFP organizer of the Minwangur electorate, Ruan Ranatunga, commented on the matter. It was to be declared open by the chief minister, but due to an emergency, he was not able to make it. So we took a decision to postpone it. Meanwhile, 725 families from the Katuwana area in the Hambantara district were provided with cement as aid under the Samata 7 housing renovation program. The event was held under the auspices of Minister Sajit Premadasa and was also attended by the State Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Development, Dilip Vidarachi. The State Engineering Corporation of Sri Lanka was on the verge of collapsing. It did not operate as the State Engineering Corporation, but was operating as the Family Engineering Corporation. Vehicles were given to 80 coordinating officers of their political party. The National Housing Development Authority was operating as the Family Development Authority. Why were there separate vehicles for the wife, the children, the grandparents and even the grandchildren? This was being done with public funds. We took over power and we were able to bring about change. Those institutions were brought back to their former glory. The State Engineering Corporation and the National Housing Development Authority was vested with the public again. Speaker Karu Surya attended an event in Anuradhapura today. The Alayapattua village in Anuradhapura was renamed as the Siri Sobita Gramya today in memory of the late Madhluave Sobita Thera. The event was graced by the speaker. Venerable Sobita Thera did not have any political desires. That must be made clear. He said good to whatever is right and no to whatever is wrong. But on his 70th birthday, he stepped out on behalf of the country. He wanted to abolish the executive presidency. We stood behind him in order to bring about good governance, a just society and a law-abiding community. We created something new in the country in order to abolish the executive presidency and create a just and law-abiding society. Well, you're tuned on to the weekend edition of Primetime News. We're still taking a look at local news now. The finance minister presided over a meeting between the traders and government officials from Putlam. There are many burning issues in the country and the rice issue is one. We have commenced a program which will take away the control that corrupt wholesale traders have over this industry within a month. It was somewhat successful. We reduced the import tax on rice by 15 rupees and imposed a maximum retail price as well. The concealed stocks of rice are being released. We need to create a supply chain so such an issue would never arise again. This issue was created on purpose. We could have easily sold rice for 75 and 80 rupees. But in order to create an issue for the government, they were selling at 100 rupees and 120 rupees. <laughs> And on to a topic which has been spoken much during the past few days. Now, it was the salary of the Auditor General. The leader of the Janasatha Peramuna, Venerable Bhattar Mulya Sila Ratnatero, also commented on this. Mahabankui, Mahavishala Devanta Salli Pramana, Horahankarapu Hora, 
The person who committed a monumental theft in the central bank is living in luxury today. In addition, the person who looted in a massive way is being made the head of certain institutions. However, the Auditor General is an honest person. He is serving the people of this country and our economy. He will not commit any theft. But he is not even getting paid. It's shameful. Therefore, I request that a salary be provided to the Auditor General. If he is protected, then the theft taking place in the country can be stopped. Meanwhile, Visaka Vidyalaya Colombo marked its 100th anniversary this year with the Visaka Centenary Walk 2017. The school began under the name of Buddhist Girls College in 1917 and was founded by late Mrs. Jeremy Styles. Later, it became known as Visaka Vidyalaya. The centenary walk commenced this morning from the school premises. We held a similar event in the year 2013. This year this occasion is special because we are having it after four years in line with the anniversary. The walk moved on to Gaul Road, R.A.D. Mel Mawata, Baudalok Mawata and returned to the school premises. And from Vesaka to DS, now an event was organized today by the Islamic Majlis of DS in Anayaka College, Colombo, to hold Islamic religious observances in line with the Golden Jubilee of the college. The event was organized aimed at building unity and reconciliation among all communities. A group including Minister Faiza Mustafa, Dr. Harsh Alas, Parliamentarian Mujibur Rahman and other invitees attended the event. The two-day workshop to enhance the talents of badminton players in the Polonnaru district concluded today. This program took place at the Gallal Sports Complex in Polonnaru and was organized by the Mercantile Badminton Association of Sri Lanka and the Polonnaru District Badminton Association. Badminton players from 10 schools in the locality were selected for this workshop. The event was also open to physical health advisors, sports coordinators and regional sports officials. Today's closing ceremony was graced by Thilina Vewell Panamat, the President's Public Relations Officer. At the conclusion of the event, all school participants were presented with a certificate. It was a battle between the staff of the Minister and the Deputy Minister. The staff of the Minister of Ports and Shipping, Arjuna Rantunga, faced off against the staff of the Deputy Minister of Ports and Shipping Affairs, Nishanta Muthuhetigama, in a softball cricket match. <laughs> The match was played at the Badegama Pradesh Sabha grounds in Gaul. The encounter was dubbed as the Battle of the Minister and the Deputy Minister. Two matches were played, one in the men's category and the other in the women's category. Minister Arjuna Ranthunga's team won the men's category match, while Deputy Minister Nishanta Muthuhetigama's team won the women's category match. <laughs> Dashcam footage captures the moment strong winds cause a truck to blow over onto a highway patrol car in Wuhan, USA. Nobody was in the car at the time and the truck driver and passenger were not hurt. We leave you tonight with footage on this incident with a message drive safe. <laughs>